So. Do you guys play at the No. No, but uh, there's like a jazz band that I yeah, think does. I, yeah. The music store guy down here, there's a small music store. He said that they play. I didn't know if that was the same thing or not. Yeah, I've heard good things about that group. I'd have some friends who play in that. Yeah. <laughs> the Hawkeye. So we'll take a look at your exam, and then we will start in on elements, see how far we get. But um, right off the bat, you'll notice that actually instead of 67 points, there were 69 points, and that didn't include the four points at the end. So I took it out of 69. And I'm not going to belabor these too much because you know, for instance, if these first two, if you put physical property and you got it wrong, it was really chemical property. So take a look at that. Now, your final in here in May is comprehensive, so you'll kind of see a little bit of all this stuff on your final, too. But the thing about chemistry is it kind of builds on itself, and so this idea of how you round, that's here to stay. The factor label, that's here to stay. Okay. So this uh, section three, you were supposed to give an example of an element, a compound, a homogeneous mixture, and a heterogeneous mixture. Um, good job with number four. Topic about the physical phases of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. I was really excited to see that. This metric system down here, probably the one that most people missed, if you were going to miss it, was this one, this micro. Okay? Micro is one one millionth of. And the symbol is the symbol we call this is mu, M U, I think, the Greek letter mu. Um, so the metric systems here to stay will be kind of using those um, throughout the course. Um, the next section, uh, counting significant figures. Now, these answer keys are always going to be posted under doc sharing. So uh, in case you want to take a look at them there. So on the answer key, I kind of put check marks over zeros, especially that are significant. Um, uh, so kind of take a look at that. Significant figures, of course, we round according to significant figures if we're multiplying or dividing. The next section, um, I think it helped that we did those example problems in class maybe too, but um, this one you had to do two things. You had to round it to four significant figures and you had to pack it up into scientific notation. So kind of take a look at that. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, then we got to the problem section, and on all of my tests, this is kind of how they go. A lot of times the front uh, page is kind of definitions or something, and it kind of builds towards the last part is always the problems. So for the first one, you're supposed to add these masses. And you guys are, it seems like to me, um, I don't mean to jinx you because you're doing a good thing. You're showing all of your work is my point, so keep up that good work. If you put it in your calculator, write it down. Um, and include units with it. So uh, when we're adding these masses, we need to round, since we're adding according to decimals, so I put two check marks over the first term, and three check marks over the second term, and four check marks over the last term. So we need to round according to only two decimals. So the answer is 64.06 grams. For B, I was after volume, and I gave you the three uh, dimensions of a wooden block, and so you're going to multiply those things together. Good work showing, good job showing your work. And since we're multiplying, we're going to round according to significant figures. Our fewest is three. So we need to round what our calculator spits back, 1,946.64195 cubic centimeters. Round at three sig figs. We're going to truncate it right there. We're going to round the four up to a five. So there's actually two ways to show that um, regular and then scientific notation. And then the C. Um, you were supposed to give me the density. So density is mass divided by volume. Now here was, these are all worth, these were worth two points. In my problems and in physical science and in math problems, a lot of times the teacher can give you partial credit. So if you show all of your work, okay, so keep that up. So if we divide the mass that was given, 92.44 grams, by the volume that was given, 18.31 cubic centimeters, we have to round four significant figures, and we get an answer of 5.049 grams per cubic centimeter. The next one, okay, there were kind of, there were two parts to number eight, and so these were each worth four points apiece, so kind of kicking it up a notch. Um, so uh, two questions about the same solution. So I drew a picture of the solution over here. This is kind of helpful sometimes. Um, the mass of isopropyl alcohol was given, um, or isopropanol. If you want to abbreviate something um, in a chemistry problem, feel free to do it. 
uh, like for instance, um, you see up here, the way I learned isopropyl alcohol was abbreviated IOH. So feel free to do that and it kind of made things easier. So when we're after the density, density is mass divided by volume. And in this case, we were given the mass of the isopropyl alcohol and the mass of the water. So that's the total mass. So that's what we're going to divide by then our total volume, 140 milliliters. It was a small thing, and I think a couple of you actually just missed one point because you didn't recognize that um, there was actually decimal, hardcore decimal after that zero. So 140 decimal milliliters is different than 140 milliliters. With the decimal, that gives you three sig figs. So when we divide out the mass by the volume, allowing for three significant figures, the answer is 0.964 grams per milliliter. So down here, uh, you needed to calculate the weight percent of the isopropyl alcohol. Um, and so that would be the mass of the component, which is uh, isopropyl alcohol divided by the total mass. So that's the 32.35 grams divided by the total mass, which I found up there is 134.90. To get it in parts per 100, you multiply by 100%. So pretty good. Okay, on to the last page. Dun, dun, dun. So for number six, it wasn't necessarily a chemistry problem, but it was like a factor label sort of problem. So you were given a distance between two cities, 153 kilometers. You were given um, the speed that you're going to be able to travel, 55 miles per hour. And you were given the link between the distances of uh, miles and kilometers. That one mile is approximately equal to 1.609 kilometers. So with all of that information, if you just kind of string it up, the terms, we can start with the distance we want to travel, 153 kilometers. We can go ahead and convert that to miles um, with the next term. And then we can go ahead, and the third term is to use our speed. Okay. So in this case, kilometers cancel, miles cancel. We're left with units of hours, which is perfect. Um, so it looks like, and this was a really common mistake. Now, these were worth six points, and I docked you one. Um, you're in very good company if you didn't catch that you were only allowed two significant figures because of the 55. So the last one of, of the regular exam, um, this was maybe the hardest one on here. But again, if you're ever faced uh, in this class or any other class, and you know the instructor is going to allow for, um, like, you can get more than one point, just go ahead and doodle the heck out of it. Um, in harder classes in chemistry, Honestly, sometimes I come away from exam, and I know my daughter's in chemical engineering. This is her last semester, and she will come away from exam, and she's like, man, I just bombed that test. But honestly, if you doodle your way, <laughs> sometimes you'll strike a nerve like the teacher actually saw that you were going in the right direction. So um, in this one, um, it says how many liters of mercury would there be in, um, in this mass of mercury given this density? So whenever you're working a problem like this, um, the, what I usually say is the, the mass, the 1.48 times 10 to the fifth kilograms, that's what I call specific to the problem. That's not a constant. That's, that's actually where I'm going to start. That's where I'm going to start. And I'm going to unpack the 13.6 uh, grams per milliliter. I'm going to unpack that so I can use it to my advantage. If I go ahead and start with ki my kilograms and I have unpacked that, I'm like, oh, well, OK, so I have kilograms here. I have milliliters and grams here. If I got that to grams, then I could use that term. And that's exactly what I did. So if you get kilograms to grams, then you can go ahead and plug in density. OK, now unit-wise, then you're left, the kilograms have canceled, the grams have canceled, you're left with milliliters. And it wanted volume in liters. So one last uh, hurrah here. Uh, one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters, so if you do that, then actually you are left with units of liters, which is where you want to be. So um, the little three down there is a little note that that actually, um, well, there's three significant figures in 13.6 grams per milliliter. There's also three significant figures in 1.48 times 10 to the fifth. 
So uh, rounding to three significant figures, this is one of those where you have a big number and actually you can show three significant figures if you just don't put a decimal. That's three significant figures. Alternatively, you can pack it up into scientific notation and show three significant figures that way. All right. Last but not least, now this is, I'm trying to think, are there other tests where I have an op opportunity for extra credit? And I can't think of any right off the bat, so <laughs> this might be the only one for this semester. But we did this in lab. Maybe I'll look for opportunities where we do something in lab and I don't want to make it a, um, an exam question, but I want to make it worth something. So maybe I'll kind of see if I can do that for other times. But anyway, um, we know that you can track down the change in heat, which is Q, the heat in this case um, taken in, okay, by this gold is equal to the mass of the gold times the specific heat of the gold times delta T, the change in temperature of the gold. So the change in temperature I kind of did as a side calculation here. The change in temperature, it went from 20 to 90. You always put the final one first. So that's a delta T of 70.0 degrees Celsius. And then plugging in the mass, the specific heat, and the change in temperature. And one last term, to get all four points, you had to go ahead and convert it, not it from joules, you had to convert it from joules to kilojoules. So when you string those up, notice that your grams cancel, your degrees Celsius cancel, your joules cancel, and you're left with units of kilojoules, which is perfect. So rounding-wise, it looks like you've got three sig figs in a couple of places. Three, three, there's, oh, there's, there is uncertainty in all of those terms. So 2.51 kilojoules for four extra credit points. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and post this.